What's going on, YouTube? What's up, Raider Nation? I am Bubba the Raider coming at you. It is Sunday night, kind of late. Um, about to start my last week before spring break, so I'm excited about that. Um, and it is also the eve of free agency. Um, and I really want to, you know, I haven't been able to give the stuff as much detailed look as I'd like to, but I really want to start making sure I document before what I would, I'm sorry, dropping my pen, what I think I would do um, and the moves I would make um, and see how they kind of shape up as I look back. So as we go through, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what, um, what I'd like to see tomorrow. Um, and I'd like to try customer free agency and I'd like to try and see, uh, see what it, what it ends up looking like. Cause it never ends up looking like you think it's going to look or like we hope it's going to look, um, but also realistically. So I'm going to give you a list of about eight or nine things I'd like to see, uh, keeping in mind that the reality is I would, I would like to see one of these things. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I see these fans that post like. Oh, uh, we need to sign Yannick Ngakwe and Shaquille Barrett and John Johnson and Kenny Galladay. And it's like, we don't have that money for that kind of stuff. Like, um, and I think free agency is a, a big thing and it's a big deal. But I ultimately think that, and this year is different because of the cap space coming down. Um, but I ultimately think that the majority of free agents are free agents for a reason, right? And the teams chose not to bring them back in. Um, this year is kind of different with the cap space and there's some guys on here who are really young and I really like the youth in this free agency class because even if they started hot and then dipped back down, um, that potential to, to be up there, they've, they've proven that they can do that. Um, so the first thing I would like to see us do, um, I'm going to call it 1A, and I don't believe that this will happen at all. I know there's rumors. I would like to see us take our 17th overall pick, maybe package it with another pick or a player or whatever, and I'd like to see us trade it to the Vikings for Donnell Hunter, um, who is one of my favorite players in the league, uh, has been for a long time, and, or Quinnen Williams, um, both really young difference makers on the D-line. Um, I don't think we will do those things, but I think that you will not find a, at least what I've seen so far, um, a better defensive tackle in this draft class than Quinn and Williams or a better edge rusher in this draft class than Donnell Hunter. So if we're going to take a defensive lineman, why at 17, if we do, I don't know. I'm not saying that we will, but why not? trade it for one who's already proven to be great. Um, or in Quinn and Williams' case, looks like he can prove to be great. I would say 1B, I think this is going to be very commonplace for everyone else um, as well, but I love Yannick Ngakwe. And I know he's kind of had a rocky last season and a half or so, but I would love to see him. He'd be the first person I would like to see us sign. Um, if not Yannick Ngakwe... Then the number two person I'd like to see a sign is Shaquille Barrett from uh, from Tampa Bay. He just, I was never very high on him, but man, this year and last year, really, this year, especially in the playoffs, he just set himself apart. He is a difference maker, and I don't think there's any way we'll get him. Um, and he's still, I mean, he's not young, young. He's only, he's still 28 years old, um, so there's still some good years there. Um, Yannick Ngakwe, kind of like Donnell Hunter and Quentin Williams, those guys are like, none of those guys, I think Donnell Hunter's 26, Yannick Ngakwe is 25, and Quentin Williams, I didn't check, I'm sure he's, you know, he's only been in the league for two years, so he's probably 22, 20, 23 years old, so. Uh, the next person I'd like to see assigned, again, I'm not saying we're going to sign all these people, but this is kind of like my tier list, is uh, John Johnson the third. These are all names you've, I'm sure if you've been following, you've heard with us a thousand times over, but I think John Johnson is a very good safety from the Los Angeles Rams, and he's only 25. Again, like I'm saying, this youth is crazy. There is, you know, the knock on um, the 
the balling out defensive backs from the Rams as they reap the benefit of having Aaron Donald pressuring the quarterback. But be that as it may, you still want them to, to do what they're doing. So he's proven that he can do that. We just need to generate the pressure. So I don't really think of that as a knock as much as maybe something to consider, but I wouldn't count. I wouldn't use that against him. Um, it's kind of like, and I know this isn't the best example. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, but it's like when a guy plays at a small school and he balls out against smaller schools and people use that as a knock. And I get what, I get what you mean, but they also like, that's what you want them to do. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what anyone else would do in that situation. So it's hard to knock someone for doing what they're supposed to do, even when they benefit from other things around them. Um, okay, so the next one, I am a, I'm a unapologetic car supporter. Um, I don't believe our offense is the issue, and if we're going to focus our resources on offense, it needs to be on the offensive line. But I also firmly believe that each free agency class, just like each draft class, there is a there is, um, there's a position of strength and there's players of strength. And if you have a chance to bring in one of those players and really make a difference on your team, you need to do so. Um, so I think that it's insane that the opportunity to sign Kenny Galladay is even presented itself. Um, and I would love to see us find a way to bring him in. Uh, I know we want to sign Nelson Aguilar and I'm all for that. I like Aguilar. I'm all aboard the Henry Ruggs, Brian Edwards train. I think that they had rough seasons. And I think, I don't think that I, I, a lot of players have rough rookie seasons and it's a weird COVID year. I'm not going to hold that entirely against them. Um, but even with that, I would love to see us bring a guy of his caliber onto this one. Next up is Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, I think he would really benefit our defensive line. Um, I really wanted Leonard Williams. I think everyone else did. The Giants franchise tagged him, um, which left Dalvin Tomlinson, who's still relatively young. I think he's 26 or 27 years old, leaving him able to get scooped up and, and brought on, um, to help out our, our defensive line is, is pretty helpful. Um, next, I, I kind of clumped these players together. There's three players, and I'd like them to be one of, one of them or so, maybe two, to be brought in, um, I'm not like, they're huge difference makers, they're big names, but they're old guys. And I really think that the benefit would be coaching up our young guys. So Richard Sherman, and he's still got some juice in, in the tank for sure. Um, you think he wants said he wants to play for two more years, but our DBs have struggled and I think he can really help, especially in the Gus Bradley system. Richard Sherman, Patrick Peterson, not so familiar, not familiar with, with Gus Bradley's system, but but another guy who's been around, he's been a, among the best in his position and and can help coach up our young guys. And then Melvin Ingram, um, these are three names you hear all over the place and make no mistake about it. I, I their, their days have come and passed, in my opinion. They are old-er. Um, and I don't think that they're going to come onto this team and be defensive player of the year caliber players. Um, but I think that they could benefit in a lot of ways. I think we probably don't even understand how Foster Moreau benefited from having Jason Witten or even Darren Waller benefited from having Jason Witten on the squad. And I think that that, and we'll see that play out. I think that's the role that these guys can play on this team. Um, two more names on the like upper echelon for me as as I'm thinking about this tonight. Juju Smith-Schuster, kind of the same reason I'm talking about Kenny Galladay. I think he's a great receiver, um, and he's only 24 years old. Bring him in if you can, if you can get him for the cheap. Sorry, I got something going on with my eye. And the last one, I like Desmond King. I liked him a lot when he came out of Iowa, and then he went to the Chargers, and I know he had like a pretty he looked really good early on and then kind of fizzled out. And then last year he went to the Titans and I think it was the Titans and he didn't do much. Um, I don't believe bring him in, 
depth on the backfield, quality player. He's a good returner too, if I remember right, he kick returns. So like, those are like my top guys. I'm not saying, you know, go sign all these guys, but one of those guys <coughs> would benefit our team. Two of those guys would be great. And that's kind of the order I'd like to see it in. Um, a couple names that I will be watching for that, that I wouldn't mind, because I'm not everything is, are these big names. Um, Sheldon Rankins, um, and he even is kind of a bigger name. Um, defensive tackle from the Saints. I remember when he came out, I think he broke his leg or something like that. And he's had, he's had a couple seasons where he's looked really, really good. Um, I wouldn't mind him at all. Malik Hooker, um, first round pick, guy that hasn't looked that great in the league, but uh, you know, the potential's there and he's young um, and you could probably get him for pretty cheap. I know he struggled with with some injuries. So Malik Hooker is someone. Um, Larry Ogunjobi, uh, I like Larry Ogunjobi. I liked him a lot. I think he was a sixth round pick for the Browns. Uh, and he's come in and he he looked really good for a while there and then kind of fizzled out. The the potential is there, so I wouldn't mind him. Um, and the last guy I have written down, food for thought. One of my favorite players in the NFL, if I'm honest. Um, but I don't know scheme-wise. To me, he's a strong safety, and that's what... We have in Jonathan Abram. Uh, we, I, think, I feel like we need a ball hawking free safety. Um, but that is Keanu Neal. Played for the Falcons. Played at Florida. I was a huge Keanu Neal fan. I don't think I had started my channel yet. but um, So there's no videos of me talking about him. But the year he came out, 2016, um, I, he was like my number two player that I wanted. I wanted Carl Joseph, number one, who we drafted. I was super hyped about it. Keanu Neal was number two. Smart, uh, big hitting safety. <coughs> we have a big hitting, strong safety. Uh, when you look at the Gus Bradley system, especially when it relates to the Legion of Boom in, in Seattle, you know, um, that's kind of like what the mold was. Good pass rushers, tall DBs, and you have a, a ball hawking free safety and a hard hitting box safety or strong safety. I feel like we have a guy in that mold in Jonathan Abram. However, he's been facing a lot of criticism and, and I think that, that it's it's relatively deserved. However, he's still really young. He is very aggressive as a football player. Um so I'm not ready to throw in the towel on him, but I definitely think Keanu Neal is a better safety than Jonathan Abram is today. Um, so just like a little food for thought. I don't know how I feel about Keanu Neal playing free safety, or I know that some teams kind of do two guys who can do both and, and whatever in that case. I'm all right with that, but I really think defense heavy is what we need to do. So that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts going into into this free agency period. I mean, I mean, there's other things. Obviously, we need offensive line. Um, we need, I believe, we need to add some depth to our running back room. There are some guys who, who I believe we should re-sign. Denzel Good. Uh, I'm on board with Nicholas Morrow. I'm on board with with Nelson Aguilar. If I if we sign Nelson Aguilar, I don't want us to to go spend a bunch of money on a Kenny Galladay or or a Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, but I think that we do, we should address a couple pieces on the offense. But we watch teams like Kansas City who just cut, I mean, we did the same thing really, but they cut three-fifths of their starting offensive line. That makes me want to go out and get pass rushers, pass rushers, pass rushers. You watched what happened in the Super Bowl. Um, when they can get after Mahomes, he can look pretty human. So... You take away some of their best blocking offensive linemen. Let's go get some guys that can really help us attack, attack, attack. Uh, and I love, I love Max Crosby, and I'm actually a bigger Cleveland Furl fan than than a lot of people are. Um, but I just think we need to add, add, add to that. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you agree with me, 
perfect. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, just win, baby.